Guys, welcome to another video. You've got Mr. Everything English. And today we are addressing a super important question. How in the world do you explain the effect? Guys, one of the most hardest parts, no, not even one, the most hardest parts when it comes to English is how do you explain the effect? How do you explain the effect of a language device? How do you explain the effect of a structural device? How do you explain the effect of a verb or a noun? What are you supposed to do? Now, what do the majority of students do? Unfortunately, because they're not given a formula. So what they're given is a peel paragraph or a Peter paragraph or a pretzel paragraph. That's lovely. But if you don't know how to explain the effect, all that will happen is the moment you get to the E in your paragraph, you're going to sit there and think about strawberries and waffles because all you're going to do is waffle. Guys, effect. Do not underestimate it. I am saying it now and clearly is the most important part of your paragraph. And in this video, I am going to teach you. I'm going to give you the method that you need. So never ever, guys, will you write paragraphs that are three line long, not because you haven't tried, but because you genuinely didn't know how to tackle it. So guys, in this video, let's address this question once and for all. How exactly do you explain the effect in a everything education? Tuition for maths, English and science. English. So you're going to find that the skills that are, that I'm an English teacher and I'm saying this guys, but you're going to find guys that the skills that are assessed in English are somewhat repetitive. Now, what do I mean by that? Just for example, on the board behind me is the, the mark scheme for English language paper one, section eight. This over here, guys, is the mark scheme for question four. This over here is the mark scheme for question two. And this over here is the mark scheme for question three. And what's one thing that we can notice off the bat for all of these mark schemes? Guys, they're pretty much exactly the same. Very, 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 very similar. Let's take question two and question three for now. If you look at guys question two and question three, you're marked on three things per question. In the first mark scheme, you're marked on how you analyze the effect of language. In the second one, you are analyzed how you analyze the effect of structure. In the first one, you're marked upon the quality of the textual detail, the quotes you choose. In the second one, you're also marked on the quality of the quotes you choose. Here guys, the third bullet point, how do you make use of subject terminology? Words like simile, words like metaphor. And over here, guys, it's exactly the same. So if you look at these two mark schemes, you're going to find that they're literally a copy and paste of each other. The only difference being over here, you analyze language and over here, you analyze structure. Now, there's something very important that must be said here. To get a top band, to get eight out of eight on both questions, you must do two things. You must, number one, be perceptive and number two, be detailed in your answer. And what a shock. You must also be perceptive and you must also be detailed in this answer. Now, look at the three bullet points and look at the criteria to jump into this bank. Detailed looks at uh, how much are you writing? Are you extending? Are you going in depth? But there's two points. Just because you write a lot, just because you go in depth, doesn't mean you've done a good job. You could be talking nonsense, you could be waffling for all the examiner knows. That is why they have the word perceptive there. The word perceptive looks at how insightful, it looks at the quality of your paragraph. Now think about that and think about these three bullet points. Can you be detailed and perceptive when it comes to the quotes that you're choosing? No, you can't. Can you be detailed and perceptive when it comes to the words you're using? No, you can't. So the only part of the paragraph that you can be detailed and that you can be perceptive is in your effect. And that is why your effect 
is so important because 90, 80% of the entire paragraph's marks are sitting in the quality of your effect. How well do you analyze language and how well do you analyze structure? That is why this video is important because you must learn how to analyze effect. Otherwise, you're never gonna get top band and you're gonna scratch your head. Hold on, I'm doing Peter, I'm doing Pretzel, I'm doing Peel, I'm doing everything my teacher has said, but where you're lacking will always be in the quality of your effect. Guys, when my students show me their work, when they, whenever they show me their work, the first thing my eyes go to is let me find their effect because that is where their marks will be sitting. Then we look at question number four. Guys, then we look at question number four and you're gonna see it's no different. The first uh, criteria you're gonna see guys, it's exactly the same. It asks the following, is your work perceptive, oops, and is your work detailed? Then it looks at the following. It looks at how well do you understand the writer's, the writer's methods? We're talking about uh, structural devices, language devices. Then it looks at how well you analyze the effect and then it looks at your textual detail. Now, the biggest difference is you have an extra bullet point and this looks at how well you focus on the statement because this bullet point has, this question, sorry, has the student statement that you must answer. Now guys, look at it again. You can't be detailed in your core, but where you can be detailed is in your effect. That is why guys, there's something that I want you guys to really understand. Now I'm showing you guys English language. We can go through English language paper two. We can go through English literature, AO2. Effect, effect, effect. That is the biggest difference between your top end students and those that just don't make it. Now, keeping this in mind and understanding the importance of effect, let's now quickly apply this to a paper. Um, I'm gonna plan and write one paragraph, but I'm gonna teach you guys how you explain the effect. My method of how you explain the effect. But first, let's answer the question. Guys, the question says, how does the writer use language here to describe the effect of the weather? That is what we are going to be using. The wind, let's just read the first paragraph. The wind came in gusts at times, shaking the coach as it traveled around the bend of the road and in the exposed places on the high ground, it blew with such force that the whole body of the coach trembled and swayed, rocking between the high wheels like a drunken man. My God, this is a paper one question two. I'm gonna quickly plan a paragraph because the purpose of this video isn't how to answer question two or question three or Macbeth or Romeo and Juliet. Instead, it's looking at how you talk about the effect. Let's use the following quote as an example. Let's use this quote over here, guys, where it says, at times shaking the coach. Let's use that quote to answer this question. How does the writer use language here to describe the effect of the weather? So let's plan one paragraph. And this, what I'm gonna do now, guys, on the board, is exactly how I plan and how I teach to plan paragraphs. So every paragraph that we do, guys, has a point and it has a reference. Now, what was our reference, guys? Our reference, I believe, was at times shaking the coach. That is our quote. That is our reference. Now, what's going to be our point here? How is the weather presented in this quote? Is that the question? Sorry, what is the effect of the weather? I'll say, guys, that the effect of the weather in this quote is that the weather is very, very destru destructive. That is going to be my point. Now, the third part of the paragraph, guys, is our technique. Now, for my technique, guys, we will be using as to start with pathetic fallacy. And now we begin analyzing and now we begin looking at the first way we look at effect. Now, how do you go about doing the effect? How do you go about doing the effect? How do you go about answering this super duper important question? Guys, this is how I teach analyzing the effect. 
So you've done your point. You've done your reference, you've done your technique. Our point is that the effect of the weather is that the weather is destructive. Our reference is that at times it was shaking the coach. And our technique here is pathetic fallacy. Pathetic fallacy is when the weather reflects the mood. So because the weather is so strong, the weather is so harsh, the weather is so destructive, the coach is shaking side to side. Now we begin putting our effect together. And I always tell my students, when you do the effect, you start with the first basic effect. And my first basic effect is that from the pathetic fallacy, we can see that the wind is indeed powerful. Done. That is my first effect. But is that a good effect? No. And is that a good effect to even give me a chance of climbing the mark scheme? No. But why do we start with the basic effect? I want all of you to start with the basic effect. Why? Because it gets your engine moving. It gets you going. What I don't want is you guys sitting in the exam, staring at the ceiling, praying that somehow a miracle will happen. Guys, get your pen moving. Get your brain moving. So start with the basic effect. But we're not finished yet. We're not finished yet. But the basic effect just gets the paragraph started. So our first effect is that the fact that the weather is able to shake the coach, we can see that the weather is powerful. And then I want you to think about the following question. What is the effect of this? What is the effect of your first effect? So I said that the weather is powerful, um, in particular the wind. So because the wind is powerful, what's the effect of that? What does that do? For example, we can say that this creates fear for the other passengers. Now we're climbing, guys. Now we've made our effect slightly better. So we said that because the wind is powerful, it creates fear for the other passengers. And what's the effect of that? That you've got these passengers in the coach, helpless, unable to do anything. They're just sitting there waiting for the destruction to take place. This effect, guys, is that it makes the wind seem undefeatable. The wind is something you can't fight against. Now we've got a good effect. Now we've got one, two, three effects. But when we write the paragraph, you're going to see how we put them all as one. So when the examiner marks our work, they will see, wow, this is one detail, one perceptive effect. They won't see that we did the effect of the effect of the effect. Now at this point, you may be wondering, sir, how in the world am I gonna plan like that in my exam? The point is this, you don't. February, March, April, May. Every paragraph you do, every plan you do, get in the habit of doing this. So when you're sitting in the day of your exam, you know, there's my quote, there's my technique. What's my first effect? What's my second effect? What's my third effect? But the paragraph is not finished, guys. The paragraph is not finished because we want to make sure that we secure the grade for detail. So the next part of the paragraph is Z because we follow pretzel, P-R-T-E-Z. And the Z stands for zooming in. So for this quote, guys, let's keep it simple. Let's keep it moving. Let's zoom in to the word shaking. And shaking here is a verb. So for our first effect, guys, for our first effect, when I say first effect, I mean this top line here. We gave three. For the second effect of the verb shaking, we're going to use or we're going to give two. We're going to give two. So the fact that the coach is shaking. My first basic effect of this, guys, is that it is clear to see that nobody is safe 
from the wind. Nobody. Nobody is safe. The, the coach isn't safe. The driver isn't safe. The passengers aren't safe. The horses aren't safe because everything is shaking. And what's the effect of nobody being safe? Hmm, what can we say, guys? What can we say? Let's say that the effect of nobody being safe is that finally it implies how the weather is merciless. Why is the weather merciless, guys? Because the, the weather doesn't forgive anyone. It takes victims um, anywhere and everywhere. And then we end it with our link, guys. Then we end it with our link. And what's my link going to be? Therefore, it is clear that the weather is destructive. Now, guys, let's just quickly recap this because I think it's very important that we fully understand what I just did there. The majority of students up and down the country will do this effect and this effect. And they won't take it further. And because they only do these first two effects, guys, they struggle to get the mark for detail and they struggle to get the mark for being perceptive. However, the way I've always taught my students is, number one, we follow Pretzel. P-R-T, point reference technique, give the effect of the technique, then we zoom in to the quote, and then we give the effect, and then we link everything back to the top. Now, the two most important parts of this paragraph should be very clear for you guys, but the two most important parts of the paragraph are the two effects. Now, if you look at our first effect, we break it down into one, two, and three. And if you look at the second effect, we break it down into two. But this is just a plan. When this is written up, it will flow seamlessly and it will come across as one paragraph. But the reason we break down the effects is because it allows for that depth and it allows for the detail. So try to use this method. Always think about what's my first basic effect? The wind is powerful. Now, what's the effect of the wind being powerful? It makes fear, it creates fear for the passengers. Now, what's the effect of the passengers being scared? We realize that they can't do anything, they're helpless, and therefore the wind is undefeatable. Furthermore, when we zoom into the verb shaking, the verb shaking, shows that nobody is safe. It's like trembling, they're petrified. And what's the effect of that? If nobody is safe, then the weather, the wind is merciless. It shows no forgiveness. Everyone is about to feel the wrath. And I've done that guys, by using the method, what's the basic effect? What's the effect of this? What's the effect of this? Then you zoom in, then what's the effect and then what's the effect one more time? I call it the effect of the effect of the effect. And it really nicely allows my students to, without even realizing, write paragraphs that are in depth. Now guys, I don't wanna leave you guys hanging here. Let's now quickly write this paragraph in source A. Now guys, I'm gonna write this out as an English language student. So in English language, you're marked on your quote, you're marked on your technique, and you're marked on your effect. All right guys, in source A, the effect of the weather is extremely destructive. That is my point complete. This can be seen when we learn how the wind was at times shaking the coach. 
Where are my guys? The use. Of pathetic fallacy. Highlights. Now I'm doing my first effect, guys. My first effect was the wind was powerful. But let me now explain it a little bit more. Highlights how the wind carries immense force and power. With no human interference nature on its own is able to cause havoc for the coach now that's my first effect gun my sorry my first effect done and do you see guys how i elaborate on that I didn't just say the wind is powerful. I use my plan and then I explain what I mean when I said that the wind is powerful. That's first effect complete, guys. Let's now take it a little bit further. Nature on its own is able to cause havoc on the coach. I believe my next part was talking about how it creates fear. Not only, let's do, let's do, let's do, let's do. Not only does the weather disturb the coach, but more importantly, causes fear for all the passengers on board. Forcing them to question their mortality. Guys, mortality is when you question whether you're going to live or whether you're going to die. And that was my second effect now done. Do you see, guys, how I'm elaborating on all of these? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my last one quick. Forcing them to question their morality, mortality. As a result, the wind appears undefeatable okay that's where I'm gonna end the full first effect that's a very good first effect guys even though I broke it down here into three sections there you can see from there to there I've written it as one now let's zoom let's zoom in guys furthermore The verb, furthermore, the verb shaking, that's my zoom, illustrates how the fear of the wind spreads from the coach 
to the mode to the mode of transport. Nobody is safe from its clutches. Its victims. That's the end of my second effect. I've just done these two guys. How nobody is safe and the wind is merciless. And let's just now finish it off. Therefore, it is undeniable that the wind causes nothing but destruction in the opening of there's my effect and my link and that is how you piece your paragraph together naturally guys if we now look at the paragraph the bulk of this paragraph is what the bulk of this paragraph is pure effect guys how you piece your paragraph so here's your plan so let's recap let's recap what we did first we looked at the mark scheme and we looked at how important your effect is then we picked our quote our quote that we picked guys was at times shaking the coach once we chose our quote we planned a paragraph and the method that we used to plan this paragraph was the effect of the effect of the effect method three for your technique and two for when you zoom in and then guys bit by bit we put the paragraph together now when the examiner marks our work guys the examiner hasn't got a clue that we're following the effect of the effect of the effect method to them we've just written out one whole entire paragraph and that is what we've just done our first effect was that the wind is powerful. The Pathetic Valley highlights how the wind carries immense force and power. With no human interference, nature on its own is able to cause havoc for the coach. Effect number one elaborated. Then I add, not only does the weather disturb the coach, but more importantly, it causes fear for all the passengers on board, forcing them to question their mortality. Because my second point was that nobody is safe. And my last one was that the weather is undefeatable. And this one, I kept it short because I didn't want this video going on for too long. As a result, the wind appears undefeatable. One full effect done. It's detailed and it's perceptive. Let's zoom in. Furthermore, the verb shaking illustrates how the fear of the wind spreads from the passengers to the mode of transport. Nobody is safe from its clutches. First effect, it is merciless, never discriminating between its victims. Now guys, remember, the exam board is going to mark the paragraph as a whole. We have two trump cards. Number one, we zoom in, which is what a lot of people don't do. Peel, Peter, these paragraphs don't allow for a zooming in. So already our paragraph should be more detailed and perceptive because we're giving more analysis. But number two, by following the effect of the effect of the effect method, never ever will you have to fluke a paragraph again. As always... Thank you for watching. I hope you found some benefit in this video, guys. My advice to you guys is as follows now. Whether you're doing Macbeth, Romeo, Inspector Calls, Jekyll, English Lang 1, English Lang 2, you're essentially analyzing quotes and techniques. So, for example, if you're doing Macbeth, chuck in the quote, unsex me here. What's the technique? And then start thinking, okay, what's the effect of her saying unsex me here? It shows she's desperate. That's your first basic effect goes over there and then elaborate 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 plan loads of paragraphs like this then practice writing them in the beginning it may be difficult but by the end of february into march and then into april it'll get easier and the most important thing guys is this no more fluking paragraphs every time you write you're gonna write a top band answer all right guys it's been mr everything english